Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Monday, June 10th, 2013. The whistleblower behind the PRISM program and NSA surveillance revelations has revealed himself. Join us now to share more as this controversial story unfolds is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Hi John, thanks for joining us once again. Thank you. Friday, we reported that six major tech companies were denying involvement with the controversial government PRISM program. Today, we have information on the individual who is responsible for what is now being called one of the most significant leaks in U.S. political history. So, John, for those who haven't been keeping up, give us a quick review of the information that was leaked and why this is so controversial. Well, last week, the world became aware of the data harvesting operations that, that are being conducted by the NSA. There were many of us that, that thought it existed or thought something like it existed. Some of us had even heard about it. Um, but, you know, and, and certainly there were indications that some large scale operations were underway by the government. Uh, but, you know, it really started to emerge as proof. We had a name, we had a program, we had slides and a deck and, and things like that that came out, you know, that really put some substance around this that this NSA program existed and in doing so they basically described how they had this unfettered access to private citizens online accounts from Facebook, Google, Microsoft, the list goes on, all the big ones um, and, and in order to do so they, what, what they were constructing was this wide spectrum data operation where they were doing analysis um, uh, and, and intelligence gathering. You know it's important to note however that some of the controversy surrounding this is really, you know, this whole notion of uh, privacy versus security. And, you know, it, although its design really was an intent on spying on individual citizens, a lot of people are concerned about that notion nonetheless. Have any of these accused tech companies uh, spoken out more about PRISM or are they still denying involvement at this time? Well, officially they are still denying involvement and you know, that indicates what is probably a premeditated protocol in the event that such knowledge of this had, had gotten out. It's interesting, however, if you look at some of the statements from the president, uh, from different people that we've heard, the director of national intelligence, uh, James Clapper, uh, he blasted the information leaks, but, you know, he also stated that these programs are legal, limited in scope, and necessary to detect these terrorist threats. The government hasn't denied it themselves, and they're actually defending it as something that's necessary. Now, 29-year-old Edward Snowden is the individual who has named himself as responsible for the leaked information regarding the PRISM program. What can you tell us about Snowden? Who is he? How did he have access to this information? Well, yeah, that's pretty interesting and something that we see a lot in, in the um, world of, of security. Uh, Edward Snowden was a uh, former technical assistant for the CIA, currently an employee, a contractor, if you will, of these defense contractors, um, Booz, Allen Ham uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, Dell. He'd been working at the NSA for the last four years and had been employee of, uh, an employee of these uh, various outside contractors, including Dell and Booz Allen. Now, after disclosing these numerous top secret documents to the public, Snowden made the decision not to opt for the protection of anonymity. Why did he choose to reveal himself, John? Well, you know, he, he basically chose to reveal himself because he felt uh, um, what, official, what he's saying officially is that he had no intention of, of hiding because he says that he has done nothing wrong. So he really wanted to be public about it, and I think he feels that he's insulated from some of the things that he felt could happen to him by just coming out and saying, hey, it was me. In a statement about the life that he's leaving behind, Snowden said, I'm willing to sacrifice all of it because I can't in good conscience allow the U.S. government to destroy privacy, internet freedom, and basic liberties for people around the world with this massive surveillance machine they're secretly building. John, how do you think Snowden's message is going to be received? Well, I believe it has a populist appeal, and, and there's going to be many people from across the spectrum, politically, you know, socially, you know, uh, people that are on the side of electronic freedom and so on, and they're likely to be accepting of it. Um, you know, as far as, you know, some of those questions are out there, this is something that has to be metered with some reality as well. The NSA ostensibly launched this tool to, to help protect our country. 
that's a big question of you know this whole freedom versus security argument and one that we're going to be dealing with with for a long time and you know essentially the bottom line is that privacy is dead what kind of consequences does snowden face for going public and how is the government responding to his actions well you know he faces a a, a world of trouble and you know, we all take, uh, I, was, I was a defense contractor at one point, we all take an oath. Um, I think mine expires when I'm 112. <laughs> so it'll be a long time before I can disclose some of the things that I did. But, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there. Uh, there's talk today that this may even be an act of espionage, uh, which of course, you know, against this country carries some significant ramifications. Mm -hmm. So we'll hear more in the coming days as far as what the government's official response is to, to what Snowden has done. I think we've heard a little bit from uh, Clapper um, as far as, you know, the, the consequence, the grave consequence of what's happened um, and what's been leaked and, and what it affects. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there. We're going to hear a lot of things that are unsubstantiated and, you know, we can't really verify very quickly. I think in the big picture, this will eventually get to like a, you know, like a Bradley Manning situation where we have a very public trial and we bring all these things out or at least, you know, some, some big discussions on um, around the security of this. Now, where is Snowden now and, and what are his plans? Well, he's holed up in a hotel in Hong Kong uh, and he's remained there since, since re releasing the uh, documents. He actually uh, left Hawaii, jetted out of there in anticipation of knowing when this was all going to be released. Uh, the word is that he chose the city because he felt that they had a uh, spirited commitment to free speech and the right of political dissent. That's a quote. Um, but, you know, here's one of the things. Hong Kong is under Chinese influence, although, yes, it is more or less independent. If you look at the big picture, you know, a lot of people feel that this could be some type of flight to China. He's certainly not coming back here. And extradition would be something that politically would be uh, difficult. Um, there would be all kinds of, you know, issues tinged with all kinds of political ramifications and economic. I mean, just a whole bunch of things would really tie into, you know, it's hard to say. I think that most people feel that, you know, he's going to definitely remain in China, not coming back. Um, or remain in Hong Kong and, and possibly, you know, go into China and seek protection in there. Do you think Snowden's choice to go public could benefit him anyway? Is there any chance it will make it more difficult for the government to charge him because of that? Well, I think he has hopes that um, there that the publicity uh, will give him some protections. In other words, you know, the people will, will kind of, you know, cry out because they would have found him sooner or later, it would seem. Um, you know, and, and he also said that um, he felt that it would make it harder for them to get dirty, I think, implying that, you know, they would just take him out somehow. And, uh, you know, if it was very public, if everybody knew who he was and all of a sudden he disappeared, this would be a, you know, uh, something that would be very public if he disappeared. And, and I think that gives him some some uh, solace in terms of, um, you know, being able to, to protect himself. Do you think Snowden's whistleblowing is going to have any sort of effect on government actions? Is he going to see the change that he's hoping for? Uh, it's doubtful. As I said, there, there's a lot to wrangle with here as a society, as a country. Uh, the government, of course, feels that this is something that was legal and necessary. Uh, private citizens are, are going to probably more gravitate to the side of, you know, they feel that their legal rights are slipping away. All the different things from privacy to search and seizure, to First Amendment and so on, you know, all able to be reached into and, and looked at by the government and different agencies. There's been scandals with the IRS and being pointed out for having individual uh, perspectives on things. You know, as we saw with the, the naked x-ray scanners, the public outrage can have some effect. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, those are now have, have been removed from these airports, although the government never really admitted any overreach or wrongdoing in putting those out there. Um, you know, they have retracted these machines. You know, they're controversial. I don't think that will happen here, though. This is, you know, just too well-rooted. There's too much intelligence that can be gained out of this. This is not likely to go away. You know, I want to point out, though, that, you know, as far as the privacy issue goes, um, you know, Jeff Kelly's piece on uh, Cumulo and, and, and protecting your anonymity in, in a way of, you know, uh, being specific about these analytics and making these things possible so that, you know, they're not really looking at, uh, you know, it's something to consider. They're not really looking at individuals. They're looking at patterns and 
you know, and, and then going down and, and, you know, getting down to that detailed level that, you know, there's just a lot of information to deal with. And, uh, you know, so it's a lot of, there's a lot of angles on this, political, technical. It's just a lot of things to look at, and we're going to be watching this for a long time to come. Well, regardless of the lasting effects, it's definitely brought this issue to light and definitely stirring up the conversation, which is an important one to have. So thank you so much for taking the time with us, John. Thank you. And on the way, Google looks to add to its mapping capabilities and a high-speed thumb drive that puts all others to shame. These stories and more are in your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup. That's next here on News Desk.